Hey friends, Ash here with Gen Sense. Hope that you're doing well. Today I'm gonna to be talking to you guys about 10 different fragrances that are perfect for getting attention. Now it's time for the disclaimer. Typically, when you get compliments or you're noticed for the fragrance you're wearing, it's gonna come from somebody you know. So that could be a coworker, could be your spouse, your girlfriend, your boyfriend, your friend friend, could be your siblings or an acquaintance. Just throwing that out there because some people think that taking a fragrance and hitting a spray of that bad boy is gonna turn them into Adonis and suddenly all of their flaws will go away and people will just fall to their knees and be like, fragrance God, teach me your ways. You smell amazing. End of disclaimer, let's check these out. All right, we got some warm weather stunners here, some fragrances that I love smelling, that I think are fantastic, that also other people seem to think smell fantastic when I'm wearing them. So it's a win-win. Stuff I love, other people love too. Nice. We're kicking it off with the Guerlain and it is Le Boise. Technically Guerlain Homme Le Boise. Lime, mint, rum, and vetiver, some of the notes in this fragrance. Gonna give you kind of a mojito vibe, very fresh and uplifting when you first spray this one on. That boozy sweetness here smells amazing and it's not overloaded. So even in high heat situations, it's not gonna come across too cloying or off-putting. Like many Guerlain fragrances, there's a bit of class hidden within this bottle as well. And from discounters, it's pretty cheap, which Guerlain probably doesn't like all their fragrances being sold at discounters for next to nothing. But for you and I, it's a pretty good thing. I mean, it's a really nice quality fragrance that smells amazing with a touch of class and boozy sweetness, versatile mass appeal and compliment factor, and I can get it for cheap. Mm. The next one, also, I believe, a pretty good price from discounters, Lom Rojas. I'm never gonna pronounce that correctly. The note breakdown on this sounds awesome. It's got pineapple and blood orange in the top, which just sounds so nice and so appealing. It's got juniper in here, it's got tonka, but it ends up smelling for me a little bit similar to Dolce & Gabbana's K in the same wheelhouse, the same style, same family. And yet I like this more than the Dolce & Gabbana. Obviously not as big of a fragrance house, not as big of a name or anything like that, but I think the scent actually pulls things off better. This one is great because it doesn't trend too youthful, but younger guys can pull it off. So the versatility there is huge. Just about anybody can pull this off. Younger guys, middle-aged guys, older guys. It's fresh, just the right touch of sweetness. Got an aromatic flair to it as well. And because it's not from a really big house, not as many people are gonna be wearing this. Although a number of these are kind of like that, flying under the radar. Now I wanna talk about an Ormond Jane and it's Montebacco Verano. This one really blew me away when I first smelled it. Fell in love with it right away. You can get this one from twistedlily.com. Gents10 is the code. Use that to save yourself 10% off the whole site. So if you're ever shopping for any of those niche goodies, save yourself a little money. Originally, I think this was supposed to be a limited edition and then it sold out. And then I guess they brought it back. The people wanted it. The people got it. So this one has tea in it, as well as Isoe Super, Cashmere, Grapefruit, and Orange, along with a whole bunch of other notes in here also, actually. It's got like this fuzzy freshness to it. Pretty good performance for me as well for a fresh scent coming in an ultra blue bottle. And for some niche fragrances, especially when you're talking fresher niche fragrances, sometimes people have a hard time justifying the cost. They'll be like, no, no, no. If I want a freshie, I'm gonna get something 30 bucks and just wear that. In this circumstance though, I think it is worth the price. And then one that got hated on hardcore when it first came out. I think I hated on it as well, or just said that it was uh, generic, boring, something like that. But if we're just talking getting attention from people, that's all you want, it will do that in spades. L'Homme Le Parfum from Yves Saint Laurent. Now, if you want a really dumbed down take on this, like a Cliff's Notes take on this fragrance, you could think of it as uh, Loam, the original Eau de Toilette from Yves Saint Laurent, mixed with a bit of Y Eau de Parfum, also from Yves Saint Laurent. So almost like they took two of their fragrances and shook them up and, and put them together, you know, made a, a cocktail. As lemon, ozonic notes, geranium, and amberwood are some of the notes in the fragrance. As I said, big time compliment puller. This one, you could just about wear year round if you wanted to, daytime or nighttime. And this one would be a great date night fragrance as well, actually better than probably all the other fragrances here. Then a little Parfums de Marley action with Percival. Now Percival smells similar to Abercrombie and Fitch, fierce. 
which means it also smells a bit similar to Mont Blanc Legend and a number of other lesser known fragrances in that Fierce style. I would say though, that if you spray this on side by side with Fierce, you are obviously going to find a higher quality in Percival. It's smoother, maybe even a touch sweeter with the citrus off the top here. If you feel very strongly about staying away from Fierce or anything close to Fierce, maybe this wouldn't be for you. But if you like that scent profile and you want that taken up to the next level, this is what you need. Now one that flies under the radar a little bit, Azaro Chrome Pure. I liked this when it first came out. I like it even more nowadays. I think it actually stands apart really well. It's kind of carved out its own little niche in the chrome line. Not the most popular in the chrome line. Nowadays, that's probably chrome extreme and chrome aqua and the original chrome. So this one to an extent kind of, you know, fell by the wayside. This is good stuff. It has orange watery notes, tonka, orange blossom and mate, setting it apart a little bit. So it has this sort of creaminess to the citrus in there. Good amount of sweetness, that aquatic freshness as well. Really good all around scent for spring and summertime. You can wear this a lot of places. It does smell unique enough that it's gonna set you apart. But even though it sets you apart, it doesn't smell potentially divisive. It's pretty safe, all things considered. Ooh, now one I really like, Still Life in Rio from Olfactive Studio. When I smell this, it reminds me of vacation time because there were a few years that I took uh, an olfactive studio travel set, or it was really a discovery set, I guess, but there was a good amount of each fragrance in there. And the ones that I wore to death were Still Life in Rio and also Still Life. And so when I smell this, it kind of reminds me of being down in Florida. I'm sure you guys have a fragrance like that, something you took on a particular trip or uh, to a particular place and you wore it over and over. So when you smell it now, it's like it shoots you back to that point in time and that location. This one has yuzu, lemon, ginger, coconut, and rum as some of the notes in the fragrance. So as this tropical vibe, get that boozy sweetness running throughout from the top into the base. This great sparkling citrus combo hits you as soon as you spray it on. I think it smells awesome. With this one, if you go really heavy, it could potentially be a little bit cloying because it is quite sweet, but truthfully, that never stopped me from spraying it on really hardcore when I went to Florida, so. Now a newer one, Ralph's Club from Ralph Lauren. Compliment machine, but also a lot of people have crapped on it for being boring, derivative, not exciting, not inventive. A lot of people got hyped when it was announced because the bottle looks classy, looks really nice. The advertisement for it made it look like a gentlemanly kind of fragrance. The note breakdown, pretty simple, but it didn't look to be overloaded with uh, the more typical fragrance notes and uh, accords that you're going to find used in a lot of blue scents nowadays. But then it came out and uh, despite the packaging and everything, for the most part, this is a blue scent. Official notes are lavender, clary sage, vetiver, and cedar. So when you look at that note breakdown, you know, there's nothing super sweet in there. You've got aromatics, you've got woods, and I think people just weren't really expecting this to be what it is. And so uh, a lot of people really hated on this when it first came out. Gotta say though, for what this does, it does it really well. If you're looking for basically an all year round fragrance, you know, any season, daytime, nighttime, uh, any situation that's going to pull positive attention, this is up there with the heaviest hitters in the designer world right now. It maybe won't be critically acclaimed ever, but as far as getting the job done, it'll do that. And I actually think it smells great. I really like this. After that, we're gonna switch it up a little bit, go with Aqua de Parma Colonia Pura. Very classy, very clean, very fresh. This one, kind of a throwback style to it. It's got citrus, pedigrain, musk, jasmine, and ozonic notes. So it's gonna give you a little bit of an aldehydic feel when you spray it on. It's gonna have that fuzziness that kind of touches and tingles the inside of your nose hairs. Or I guess I should have said, tingle the hairs on the inside of your nose, not the inside of your nose hairs. Truth be told, first time I smelled this, it didn't really blow me away into another dimension. It was one of those deals where I smelled it and thought, pleasant enough, and sat it aside. Reminded me a bit of Aqua Essenziale Colonia from uh, Salvatore Ferragamo, which is way cheaper. Obviously also reminded me of some of the older Aqua de Parma fragrances as well. Then I came back around to wearing this some more and the additional quality in the Aqua de Parma as compared to the Ferragamo set it apart a bit. And the fact that it does smell more modernized than some of the other older Aqua de Parmas that I have also made it a little more wearable. 
guys that are a lot younger may not go for this one because it does have a bit of that gentlemanly classy sort of vibe to it but if you have an appreciation for older style italian colognes check this one out last but definitely not least light blue forever grapefruit bergamot ozonic notes and vetiver some of the notes in the fragrance i am in love with the grapefruit in the opening in love with it it's got that rindiness has a natural kind of feel to it it's tart it's sour it's a little bit bitter and has sweetness there at the same time offsetting that aspect or those aspects the opening here is killer i love it my wife loves it lots of people have ranted about how awesome it smells dry down is good too that vetiver in there really appeals to me on a personal level because i'm about that vetiver but this one does have the potential to be a little bit divisive and that's because of that opening. That grapefruit and bergamot combination, specifically the grapefruit, is not going to appeal to everybody. Yes, I've gotten a lot of positive attention because of that opening, but because it takes that more, I guess, natural approach, we'll say, with that rindiness, that tartness, some people are not gonna like that. I've actually seen some people compare it to the smell of BO. I don't get that at all. I've actually never had anybody say that to me when I had them smell it and say, oh, uh, it smells like body odor. But obviously, if some people are making that comment, then some people are getting that. And so that's not going to be great for everyone. If somebody has that stick in their mind for some reason, smells like this, they're going to associate it to that and it's not gonna work out. So be aware the citrus here are definitely going to be different than 99% of the citrus notes that are used in designer fragrances. And there's a possibility, even if it's not a huge possibility, there still is a possibility that you're gonna smell it and hate that citrus in the opening. And if you do, it's gonna ruin the fragrance for you because that is make it or break it. That opening grapefruit blast is make it or break it. All right, guys, that's going to do it for me. Thank you for hanging with me. Some fragrances that have done so well getting me positive attention. Some that are more obvious, some that are less. Hit me up in the comments below. Let me know some of the fragrances for spring and summertime that work really well for you. Thank you for hanging with me. Thanks for your support. Stay safe out there, and I'll see you guys tomorrow with another fragrance video. See you guys later.